All right, let's do this. <laughs> yes, Katie Day is in the house. Hey, Dan. So uh, it's nice to meet you all. We're going to just uh, get this rolling. So Jordan, would you like to do a little quick intro? Go back. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Quick, um, quick, quick run through. Uh, Siri and I uh, came together to host this because we're both running uh, larger teams and we've spent a lot of time over the last few years building systems and operations and kind of the behind the scenes nuts and bolts that help a, a team function at a high level. And um, we felt that there's just so many people out there that know so much more than we do in different ways. And so the really the theme of, of, of this week to week is we're, we're partnering with different team leaders and saying, hey, come come jump in with us. Talk to us about how you got where you're at. Tell us about what you're doing that's like, you know, unique to you that you feel like would bring a lot of value to the rest of the group. And then we'd also love to hear um, what, where the, the, you, Katie, the team leader is stuck and how we as a group can, can interact. And so we really do want this to be interactive. If you guys can turn your cameras on, if you have questions, throw them in the chat, interrupt, raise your hand, do whatever you want to do. Um, but a little bit about me, I'm in Denver and I have a team of, uh, there's about 40 of us, um, between agents and staff and systems and all that. I got licensed in 2017. We did a, about 220 million this last year. And we're navigating this funky market just like the rest of you. There you go. All right. So yeah, Jordan and I, we live very similarly with our team. So I have a team, as you can see here, I'm in California. I have a team of approximately 70 agents. And we run somewhat of a hybrid model um, in that we really try to emphasize it to be about the agents. So my team name is The Brand Realty. And what we, what we really do best is we run a high operation. Um, we also try to help agents to have their own branding, which you don't typically see a lot of on teams. It's, it's typically not about um, the agent. So that is like my superpower. And I'm really excited to show you guys basically under the engine of these teams. And Katie, what I would like to see is as many things that you can pull up that kind of the bright shiny objects as well so if you can pull things up that you would like to share with us mm -hmm. so that we i'm a visual person as you can see we have all these slides um here so if you can pull things up and show us that would be awesome i want to see what you've got yeah so katie uh give us this quick snapshot tell us a little bit about you know your world today maybe how long you've been in the business how you got there um and what your team looks like just like functionally and then yeah, we, if you want to share your screen or show us any of your, you know, widgets or gizmos or things that you're doing that are making uh, your team function at such a high level. Well, does everybody know Katie Day, by the way? You all should know who Katie is, right? We do, we're we like, oh, world. everybody just knows Katie, right? The whole world <laughs> so knows who Katie Day is. <laughs> oh, She's famous. I know. Brian Serhant and Katie are like, here. Jordan, where are your sunglasses? Mr. 305 over here. He's uh -oh. so yeah. modest. And, you know. Sunglasses Anyways, and beauty. All right. um, cool. So what's up, guys? My name is Katie Day. Um, I am a real estate agent and a team leader down here in Houston, Texas. Uh, we run a team of about 21 people. Um, so we have a small admin team, and then we are um, a high production team. So we've got, I think right now, about let me let me sort my spreadsheet we've had some adjustments to the team over the past couple of weeks so just to make sure i'm counting everyone appropriately um so yeah, we've got 16 actual uh sales agents on the team including my husband and i uh we we're both sort of still in production ish um we've got a marketing manager a recruiter two transaction coordinators and then a virtual assistant um so that is kind of our setup um, I got into the business full-time in 2017, started the team in 2018, went through a lot of trial and error through 2019. Um, and then in 2020, kind of, um, uh, I don't want to say, we kind of figured out the best way for us to onboard and bring people on and then grew the team uh, more so in 2021 and then last year. So um, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, down here in Texas, we talk in units, not volumes. We did about 211, uh, you know, sides last year. 
um, for, you know, about like, I think it was, you know, 80 million, you know, so if I was in California, I'd be telling you how many millions and millions of dollars we sold, but that's not how it works down here. In Texas, I, I don't so. do that, Katie. I, my brain doesn't, <laughs> I'm like units all day long. I, those big numbers um, scare me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, a, I mean, and in, in San Diego, Siri, you just can't count that high, you know? Yeah. It's just, you in know, fact, on our last is... team meeting, I was like, here, look at the screen. That's what we did. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, you know, we have always tried to run really lean. Um, this year, as we continue to grow the team, um, we are going to continue to grow on our admin side um, and support side, because um, I think that's really important to ensure that you're continuing to add value for your team and, and understand kind of what that value prop is. Um, and so, um, you know, this year we're planning on hiring a sales manager, we're planning on hiring an operations manager, um, and, you know, really kind of growing out our marketing department and just continuing to, to layer on, you know, the support. Um, and also that will help for me to, um, you know, be a little bit less involved in the day-to-day, -day, um, and more so over kind of all of the things. So that's where mm -hmm. we're at today. Yeah. You're still in, you're in that build process of your operations. I mean, cause listening to what you have now, it's great. I can definitely see where you would have a need. Cause you're probably doing a lot of that stuff still, right. Administratively you're doing spending your days living yeah a, a decent amount you know so it's yeah. like it's a it's a juggling act between you know um the you know selling of real estate managing the team balancing travel and speaking and doing things for for growing real and then you know all of the things all of the admin stuff as well so we're working on um you know what that kind of looks like um luckily you know having my husband in the business with me um, you know, he does a lot as well, as far as like the management of the team and the day-to-day -day and stuff like that, especially, you know, for all the traveling and stuff that we, we, we do. So what would you say your next hire is? Sales you manager. Mean? Sales manager. Sales manager. Yeah. yeah. So we, um, we are actively looking for a sales manager. So if anyone wants to move to Houston, Texas, or knows a, you know, badass in Houston, Texas, that's looking for a new position, let me know. But, um, yeah, so we're actively looking for a sales manager, um, again, right now we've got like 14 sales agents. Uh, we're looking to grow that to probably 30 this year. And so there's just no way, right, to manage mm -hmm. that many people um, and hold them accountable, right? So we, one thing that we've noticed um, as the team has grown is like a lot of the accountability comes from within. So rather than me being like, you know, Jordan, why didn't you do this? It's like series coming to Jordan and be like, dude, Jordan, you said you were going to get a deal under contract this month and you didn't like what's going on, you know, and, and kind of that level of accountability, but like, as far as holding agents to our standards and expectations, um, you know, as we continue to grow, we need someone that's, that's kind of monitoring that doing one-on-ones and stuff like that. Um, you know, as we have newer agents and things. Katie, I probably missed this, um, mainly because I just now took my Adderall. So I'm, I'm getting you know? up. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, Jordan. <laughs> Uh, Give me hey, some of that, man. Are any you other ADD wow. people here? I could, I could <laughs> Who's got some ADD? Okay. All right. It's a real thing. Um, but you, so you said 21 people, 14 agents. So how many staff do you have? Um, yeah. So we have basically, I, I did say that Jordan. So um, thank you for apologizing for missing that um, host. But um, yeah, we've got two transaction coordinators. We've got a marketing manager and then we've got a VA um, and our videographer. Um, but yeah. Got it. What, what you said that the, the, the sales managers are next hire, but what other departments, like, if you will, cause the way we've built our staff is we kind of have like departments, we have transaction listing, class client yeah. care, ISA lead generation, all the different things. Right. But what is a, you said sales manager, next one, what's, what, what do you believe is like a department that you want, but is not really the next domino that you're looking at down the road? squirrel Gary um Gary. yeah so I think that the uh the the outlook for us as far as what we will look like at this time next year um is going to be you know a larger sales staff so like the the sales team you know I want to be to 30 agents 30 producing agents let me let me add that asterisk right um you know 30 producing agents um and then you know we would have kind of like our sales manager right over the sales team we would have our ops manager over you know the ops team and then marketing over marketing over marketing and like under marketing we would have um a client care coordinator right that does kind of the the pop buys and the and the client care and the gifts and, and all of that stuff we would have 
kind of our digital ad space and then kind of our outreach marketing. Um, we do a lot as far as like different mailers and um, a lot of like agent agent referral stuff. Um, so about 25 to 30% of our business is um, agent agent referrals. <clears throat> and so, you know, we, we try to, you know, continue to stay top of mind with agents as well. And so kind of breaking that stuff up into, um, you know, the marketing department would be important for us. Would Love you guys it. like to see what my ops team looks like? Yeah, sure. I'm keep some. I know it's not about me, but might as well oh. show you since you're working on growing some stuff. Um, <clears throat> Katie, I'm, I want to show you this stuff. I also want to show you guys here. So this is actually the back end of where our agents go when they need to find whatever it is. Um, I need to when I need to find things, I go here because I don't know where everything is either. Um, but here's our org chart <clears throat> and obviously this org chart. So do you have an or organization chart, Katie? Do you have it's not something pretty like this, but yeah, we've got one. Yeah. Okay. Show off. <clears throat> well, you guys, yeah, I didn't start and, you know, <laughs> well, yes, I also, also have marketing. Let's... Never mind. <laughs> uh, Liv, thank you for making this. Um, it didn't start this way, but what I want to show you is you know, as you're, as you're growing, um, obviously this started out with just Siri here, right? That was it. And that was about four and a half years ago. And Keely, who's my director of ops started as a TC and was just terrible. I don't know if Keely's on here, but she totally sucked. And so she now is the director of ops. And so now we have, you know, everything kind of structured here. Um, we actually just hired a director and we call him, so we don't say sales manager. We call her a director of agent success. I think personally, a sales manager is kind of like a, I know where you're going and you might have a different title, but I think that there's a lot to say with the, the different names. So like Liv is our creative director, right? And so anyways, this is our chart, but this, this, is, this keeps growing. I'm not sure that we would be adding more uh, operations anytime soon, uh, other than maybe some virtual assistants, which we have three right now. We would just keep layering virtual assistants to help different people. So Siri, how um, many, so how many, how many salaried staff do you have? I don't know. Whatever I have on here. How many do I have you guys? Um, a lot. I have a lot. Yeah. We, we run. Yeah. My bills are high every month with stuff. Um, I'm also building something to be very high scale with agents. So our projection for this year is we want to have 150 agents by the end of the year. So we work off of scale. And so I need, I need a lot of ops. Also, these three right here are agents, but they're agent leaders from within and they run different programs. So I've got Tulane on my Zillow Flex, George on my Rocket Homes, and Steve is running my Ojo. Um, so those are agents from within. Love it. Yeah. So Katie, um, you, you built this pretty fast and you got a lot of going on and like I, I've kind of from afar and getting to know you uh, see you as someone who similar to Syria is really high operational and gifted mm -hmm. behind you know I'm over here trying to take drugs they stay focused um <laughs> so I'm much more of a leadership <laughs> guy and a recruiter and uh not so involved in the details you, but, you need uh, you need I know Katie and Siri you, uh, in your life <laughs> yeah absolutely but I yes. I know that you've been uh you've created an onboarding system and you've can you tell us about how you've grown your agents and how you've onboarded so many and how you plan to get to 30? Like what system have you built? Uh, what does that look like? Yeah. Can you take us into a deep dive with that? And can you show us anything too, Katie? I'd love to see anything that you have if you're um, So yeah, I mean, there's, there is some stuff I can show, but some of it like isn't stuff I would, would uh, be able to share after showing. So like I can definitely show y'all things, but like they're like internal paid login stuff that like isn't... Um, you know, things that yeah, are yeah, able yeah. to be, no worries. um, you know, shared. So let me, if you yeah. want to send me the passwords, you can definitely do that later. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, so basically like in 2019, um, that was kind of our first year as a team and we hired agents on individually. Right. So I like met Dan, thought Dan was a cool guy. So we're like, Dan, you should totally join our team. Right. And so he comes on board and, you know, we did like an okay interview process, maybe, you know, had a couple interviews and then we pour a ton of time into Dan. Dan does or doesn't sell a couple houses, but then Dan realizes he doesn't want to be in real estate and leaves. Right. 
And so that happened to us four different times with four different agents throughout 2019, right? Like we hired, you know, Dan, Jennifer, Kat, and Darren, and then they all ended up leaving real estate or leaving our team. And we were just like, bullshit, like this was a waste of time, right? Like we, we poured all of this time into these people. They decided they wanted to go out on their own. They decided they didn't want to do real estate. Like what we're doing is not working, right? Because we're pouring so much time into people where that's taking away from our personal production, you know, and, and what are we going to do? And so we decided moving into 2020 that we would start onboarding people in groups, right? And so bringing people on in groups was beneficial for a couple of different reasons. One being the amount of time that it took to train Dan versus the amount of time it took to train Dan, Jennifer, Kat, and Darren was the same amount of time, right? And like, we know that 87% of real estate agents fail and don't make it to their next renewal, right? And so in understanding that, like, we also know that like, we can tell them the right things to do. And if they do them, they're going to be successful. Right. And so having four people come on at the same time, training them all at the same time, um, was helpful for us from a time perspective. And then if three of the four worked out, if Dan then quits, cause he's just so bad at real estate. I love picking on Dan Parker. If Dan <laughs> Parker then quits, then it's like, okay, well, like, I'm very sad to see him go, but we still have three rock stars that are crushing it on the team. So that was kind of our, our goal for 2020 was to go through and, and onboard people in groups. And so we started it with a 30 day training program. It was every day in person for like three hours and it was great, but like, it was still a lot of time. Right. And like, as, as, you know, you guys are saying like, as you continue to grow, like you're not able to pour that much time into every single bucket of your business. So now what we've done is we've gotten it down to where it's a three week training program. It's 90 minutes, Monday through Friday from one to two 30 PM. Right. Cause we have like our team stuff in the mornings, we have role plays, we have huddles, we have different trainings in the mornings with our team. And then in the afternoon, instead of, you know, going on an appointment, we're doing this instead. Right. And so We've been training people in groups. Um, the other thing and something that I'm, I can share with you guys here that I'll pull up as I'm trying to talk. And when and you say we, Katie, who is we? Who's doing My husband training? and I. Okay. And so um, now what we've got is this. And so we use Trainual now. Um, and so we um, have this basically 14 day training program where we go over everything, sales, marketing, and operations in real estate, right? And so we go over this and basically prior to them coming in or hopping on Zoom for the day, they watch videos in these different modules on the introduction to the program, their business planning and income goals, daily success habits, uh, scripting, marketing, showing properties and open houses. And every single day we go over these. And so- LP mama. <laughs> your favorite script. Um, and so basically like, we'll go over these things. Um, they'll watch the videos on their own. And then when we come into class, rather than me sitting there for 90 minutes lecturing and being like, okay, so the L in LP mama stands for location, write that down. Like we come in, they've already watched that video of me droning on about it. And we can like actually role play LP mama and go over, Hey, like, so what are questions you could ask to figure out their location? How would you do this? If it was this type of lead versus that type of lead. And we can really get more into kind of the nitty gritty and tactical of the training, as opposed to it being just again, like droning on kind of like I'm doing right now. So question for you on this. So, uh, what about experienced agents versus non-experienced agents? And yeah. what is your flow for well, so that? I think one of the things, um, and, and when I talk to people that are like, I want to start a team and whatever, like, I think one of the most important things is determining what your agent avatar is, um, and what type of agent you're looking to recruit to your team, right? Like some people want brand new agents because they want the ones that are just going to do exactly as they're told. Some people want the more experienced agents because then, you know, you're getting people that already have some experience, but they may have bad habits. Like, so there's pros and cons to both, um, for us. Um, everyone goes through this program, right? And so obviously like Sierra, if you were to join the team and you're more experienced, you already have a sphere, you already have these things. We've had people that have gone through the program that have been licensed for five years. And one of them recently went through the program and she's like, I hate to admit this to you, but I've never been on, I've never done a buyer consultation before. She's like, we just, my, my team lead just had us like, you know, go show and you know, you, you kind of go over the process, but we wouldn't actually sit down and like set up their search for them and go over like what they liked and didn't like about houses and like write all of that down. You just kind of figured it out along the way. And she's like, I just got a buyer because I sat down with him and did a buyer consultation. She's like, that's like 
the the saddest aha moment for me. And like, she was saying this, like not us, right? She was like, this is crazy, right? And so um, I'm kind of trying to like make three points at once. So one is to define your agent avatar, right? And who it is that you're trying to recruit to your team. So for us, we do like more experienced agents. Um, I like the six to 18 months in the business, right? So like they've done it. They've maybe sold a few houses, maybe 10 houses. Uh, they are, um, you know, they know that it's expensive to do it on their own. They know that like, there's probably things falling through the cracks and they could use marketing support. They could use admin support. They could use the transaction coordinator, all that. Um, and they also know that it's like real estate's a lonely business, right? So that's like our one agent avatar. And then our other is brand new agents. So the ones that get licensed and just know that like they need the extra support to be successful. Um, and so those two are kind of what we see in most of our cohorts or classes. And what's great about that is the more experienced agents bring that actual transaction experience and stuff like that um, versus, you know, the, the brand new ones that are just trying to take it all in. Um, so, yeah. so one of the questions in here is how did you get the videos? Do they get improved over time? So I'm assuming <laughs> the videos in your, in your training system, right? And I know Jordan, you, you and Aaron have gone heavy on videos in your training system too, right? Yeah. Uh, th just one, <clears throat> I think one hack or, or tip I'll give everybody. Cause I I'm, I'm guessing not everyone has like, we have our own, uh, think uh, I mean, I mean, there's hundreds of courses that we built out. You know, we have a virtual assistant university, a ISA university. So uh, TC, you know, anytime we hire somebody, like we've already built it so we can literally just make them go through onboarding and make them watch all the videos. But we didn't start there. We started yeah. with, it was just me and an agent would come up to me and go, how do I write a contract? And I'm like, great question. Um, and so this was my hack. And, and I would encourage all of you to do this. I would say, great question. Why don't we do a Zoom call right now? And I'm going to record it. And I'm going to walk you through the contract. And then I would, I would literally convert it into a YouTube private video, um, put the URL in a Trello card of new agent uh, library of training tools. And then every time someone asked me a question, I would just do it on Zoom. Like I, they would even be in my office sitting next to me and I would just re record it. And that became my training library. And so every, I, I would never answer a question without recording it. And eventually I had this massive library that my admin was categorizing into different topics, but now it's, it's, we're upgrading it slowly, but surely, um, you know, year by year, cause we, we bring on new systems, but Trey, uh, Katie, how have you, um, built yours? Yeah, for sure. Um, so a similar thing. And so I'm going to share my screen here real quick. And so like we record everything. So like every single training we record, um, every single, you know, the same thing, like questions, anything like that. What I like about it is obviously then like other people can watch it. But what I don't like about it is like, if Jordan and I are going over something and Jordan has a ton of questions, yeah, they're probably questions that Siri would also ask if she was going over a contract, but like, it probably is a video. That's a 30 minute video that could have been a 10 minute video. And so that was when we were like, okay, we're going to transition this over into trainual and have like, as, as Jordan has thinkific or whatever, like you can have whatever online learning management system you want. Like we are like these, some of these videos are 60 minutes long when it like could be a 10 minute video. And so like, again, we have all of these with like every SOP we do role play every week. So this is like years of role play videos. We basically recorded videos that are like us going over LP mama and it's a seven minute video. Right. But like, if I would have like recorded, you know, a video of, uh, you know, us going over LP mama, that's probably a 30 minute conversation, right. Or maybe even longer. And so while some of that back and forth is good and some of those questions are good, um, we basically sat down and said, Hey, here are all of our topics for, you know, our training program. What are the things that we want to hit in each one of these? And my husband and I basically sat down and recorded every single one of these videos. So that took like a few hours, you know, to get that all done. But like, that was what we uh, basically committed to because we wanted it to be as, as like short as possible and like jam packed into that like seven minute or 10 minute time frame, um, and just get like, these are the points and get them done. Uh, Katie, yeah. did I just, did I just witness that you are using your training videos as also YouTube channel videos that are out to the public? So they are not out to the public. They are unlisted videos. 
Oh. Um, and so, yeah, they are unlisted, but it's, Ooh. it's, uh, cause like, I, like, so me, I do have some agent facing videos, but like some of these, like, just aren't, uh, they're not great videos to be like that. Someone will watch and then be like, Oh, I want to join your team. Like, they're just like, whatever. Um, I think the other point I had another point, um, on earlier when we were talking about like, Oh, do Siri asked if experienced agents go through the training program. Um, I think it's important because it's like everyone runs their teams differently. So even if someone has been in the business for three years or five years or whatever, the point or the reason that I have them go through the training program is so that they know how we do things, right? And they know how we do marketing and they know how we overcome objections and they know how we have templates set up in our emails and in our MLS systems and in our zip forms and stuff like that. And so like, I always tell people that like the brokerage training you get from ABC brokerage um, is like very general. And they're going to say like, Hey, generally you should call FISBOs and you should generally call expires and whatever, but we're going to be like, this is how you click on the expire. This is how you call them. This is how many times you call them. This is when you do it. This is how you do it. And going through this program is helpful for them to understand how we do things. And then also um, having like them be very um, like participate a lot in the actual program is helpful, you know, from a, from a like kind of team standpoint as well. Hey, so we, we got a, we got a couple of questions. I'd love uh, Katie, you'd respond. Uh, Steve, you want to ask your question? There you go. Oh, sorry to, sorry to call you. Pull his and mic muted. in and yeah, you know. sorry, my AirPods don't work. Um, it, when uh, so new or experienced agents, do you ever have them complete like a specific tract in the uh, course section before they can get leads or start to do business, or how do you manage that? How do you manage who goes through what, and how do you hold that accountable? Yeah, for sure. Uh, welcome to Real, Steve. Um, so I think we have like the three week training program and that's just kind of like you go through the training program, right? If you're experienced, you probably already have some business you're working, right? Or your sphere or whatever. Um, you know, what we basically expect from them within their first 60 days is when they first join the team after that three week training program, um, they have to get their sphere uploaded into a spreadsheet, which we then would put in the CRM. They need to do all of their onboarding stuff to get into all of the systems and like all of that type of stuff. And once they have that, then we turn on leads for them. Um, we have different levels of leads depending on your experience on the team. Um, and basically like if um, they are, um, once they've sold 10 homes with us, then they get like the higher quality leads or the, the warmer leads, more bottom of funnel leads, but otherwise they're kind of getting the, the Chime PPC and uh, Chime PPC, Facebook, like those type of leads. Um, during their first 60 days with the team, we expect them to do at least six open houses, um, a certain amount of social media posts. They need to preview listings in their farm or their neighborhood, um, complete a certain amount of prospecting sessions and have at least one contract in escrow. Um, and at that point, then like once they've sold 10 homes, then those things plus the 10 homes, then they get the better leads, but they have to do basically the onboarding checklist before they get the uh, new leads. So and one I of the have... things, go ahead. No, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry about that. One of the, I didn't hear this earlier. Um, and maybe you said this, do you run internal sales or ISAs or, or the leads go directly to the agents? Sorry, what was that? Do you run uh, uh, ISAs or do you have an ISA team or, or when leads come in, do they go right to the agents and, and they convert? Leads go directly to the agents. Um, okay. You know, my thing, like the, the, the um, forever debate on that is like, you know, if they're not selling any homes and their schedule is empty, like they should be, have the time to call the leads, right? Uh, versus having an ISA that's doing it. Um, so like, could we have higher conversion if an ISA was making the initial phone calls and actually doing all the follow-up? Probably. But like, I want agents to understand that like, if you're banging the phones and making the calls and doing the follow-ups that like, you know, it works. And then once you've kind of proven yourself to us, like then you get the leads where I'm just saying like, Hey, Steve's got a, a person moving to Houston and they're pre-approved and ready to go out tomorrow. Like, please take this, you know? And so uh, for me, it's a little bit of like the, the earning it. Um, but I think long-term, like an ISA department is likely something that we would have um, just to have higher conversion for sure. Steve, Thanks. nice to meet you, by the way. We just met on Facebook the other day. Likewise.
Yes. Um, speaking of onboarding, I do want to show you guys um, what we found is so you have onboarding. How do you track where they are? So, Katie, you were saying once they do this and they have to do this and they have to do that, right? So what is what we had to grow was how do we actually keep track of all that stuff? And so we've built this is in Monday, but we have an onboarding tracker. Um, this list goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and I don't know how much you guys can see, but basically it helps us to track um, where they are in the process and all the different things that they have to do in order to complete. We do segment our training and we also segment our agents into new agents and experienced agents. Um, and our, we also have two different modules in our training that we ended up building out because we don't want to stifle the experienced agents at the same time. Three weeks would be really hard for some of the top producing agents that we now can attract over. It would just be hard for them. So we try to speed up their systems and give them less. And that's just, we didn't start that way, um, but our journey has taken us into building out those, those two different ways of doing it personally for us. And then how do we track it? And how do we know when they're done? Renisha, you just went through the onboarding program. Um, oh, calling me out. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I know. What's up, girl? <laughs> anything that, I mean, and, and uh, you know, any feedback or anything like that that you'd want to share with what you're um, Yeah. I mean, I thought I was very thorough. This is my second brokerage. Um, and I would say onboarding at my other brokerage. I mean, it was thorough, but I felt like as a newer agent, I needed a lot more accountability, tracking, like systems, tools, resources that I can easily navigate to. And I thought that the onboarding provided that for me here. So it was good. Good, good, good. One thing that, uh, Katie, that we learned, we used to have this like really slow process of getting people into onto our team, like from an interview standpoint, from uh, are we the right fit? Are we the right culture? And and what I real, <clears throat> I think what we realized that is that we were like, we were slowing people down and, mm -hmm. and we kept our door really uh, small where what we've done recently is we've just opened the thing wide open and we've created a process, a process to weed people out. And so we, we stole the hello week thing from spring B in Utah, but we, we bring people in for four or five days and we give them this long checklist, you know, that involves like meeting people, shadowing a couple meetings, writing these different essays, like doing all this stuff. And it ends with the interview. And by the end of the week, like they either like our team or they don't. And we either like them or we don't. And we invite them into onboarding. And depending on if they're an experienced agent, you know, we have a, a, a week long onboarding program, kind of like Siri does, where we have checklist things for them to do. If they're a brand new agent, we have a 30 day onboarding program. And if they don't finish it in 30 days, then they're out. Like, and it's, it's hard. It's hard to complete because if they can't finish it and be resourceful and figure it out, then they're not going to be resourceful and figure it out as an agent getting leads. And so they can't get leads from us until that, that 30 day onboarding is complete. But what we've, what we've seen is we have more people interviewing. We have more people interested. We have more people coming to preview our team and um, you know, the, the cream rises to the top. And so we're, so we're learning that, uh, but we, we were so slow on letting people jump in yeah. that I think it's, it slowed down our growth. And I, I was always scared to bring in new people because I thought it would hurt us or hurt our culture. And what I did is I just sped it up and made it harder. Um, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Let's get some more questions here. Mark, um, are you on here? It looks like you have a question if you'd like to ask your question if you're available. Yeah, I, I think you're talking to me. Um, yeah, um, yes, I, I guess I'm there the might be a mark. lot of marks, right? Yeah, yeah, there could <laughs> <But> be. <you. laughs> um, I'm scrolling now to look for that question. The first one had to do with how much of I, I'm not my background uh, long term isn't real estate. So I, I've been in real estate now 10 years, but still a lot of these mindsets are new to me from what I bring to from my experience. And so I'm curious in these conventional structures of teams in this business, how many of them are dependent on generating leads that get distributed to those on your team? I would say it's, I don't know of many teams that aren't generating leads for their agents. Does that answer the question? I Yeah, pretty, pretty well. 
pretty I don't think people create teams just for operations alone um, that I'm aware of. I think you need to provide opportunities. Well, I would think the operations that get created are to support all of that lead generating right, right, right. Yeah. version activity. Yeah. Right. So it's a mixture of, of both of those things, obviously mixed with culture um, <clears throat> and all the fun things that teams bring to it and the structure in the community. And then lastly, to follow that up, and I don't know if it's prying too much, if anybody's open to share, maybe it's already been shared, but generally speaking, what are we talking about from a budget perspective for lead generation and then the support, the operational support of it? So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it really depends on your size of your team and how many leads you wanna generate with that stuff. So, I mean, I know people that are spending, foul, I mean, $50,000 on realtor.com leads, right? Like amazing numbers like that. They also have 200 agents on their team. Um, so I think it just Katie, really your, depends. Yeah. Katie, what does yours look like? I, uh, <clears throat> I know you guys do a ton of marketing and video and all that kind of stuff, but are you spending a ton of money on leads? Um, no, so the majority of our stuff's organic. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something that as we've grown, um, we've, we've layered in PPC. Um, we were doing it through Chime, but we're looking to to utilize a third party um, that we can kind of tweak things, you know, more live time with. Um, so, I mean, we spend right now about fifteen hundred dollars a month in PPC, um, but we're going to increase that budget with a new company. Um, but yeah, up until basically Q three of last year, we weren't spending anything on lead gen. It was all. Um, I, we weren't spending on anything on lead gen per se, but like we were spending a lot of money on agent agent referrals. We we're spending a lot of money on, we do six client events per year. Um, we do, um, you know, 70 to 80 grand a year in video production. Like, and so all of that goes towards lead gen. Right. Um, but like the cost of the lead, if it's coming in from Instagram or YouTube, isn't something that's like an outlay of cost. So like, it's not necessarily like dollar for dollar, something that I can tell you, this lead cost me seven dollars or fifty dollars. Can, can right? you can you dive into the agent to agent referral? I I there's a I, there's a huge team in Houston. You have to know their name. I can't think of the guy. Uh, they're I think they're Keller Williams. Is that who um, you're sending your referrals like, to? What the hell, Jordan? No, I'm just I was at one of their I was at this conference and this guy was speaking and they have an agent to agent referral department and you know they're one of the bigger they they do like twenty five hundred transactions a year as a team so they're massive but they they do like 40 agent to agent referrals a month and so what i'm asking you is that's just something i i've never focused on can you and i'm sure a lot of people could could learn something here um what does that look like for your team like what does it mean to grow and spend money on agent to agent referrals i mean i get agent to agent referrals just naturally um but what are you doing to focus on it to grow it yeah, for sure. Well, and so um, I think it's just being intentional, right? Um, like, as you know, and we've seen each other across the country, right? Like, I travel a lot to go to, you know, Tom Ferry events, to Inman events, to real events, to speak at events, like things that agents are putting on, things that like coaching companies are putting on and whatever, right? And so when we go, I don't have any of them in front of me because I'm now officing out of our guest bedroom and no longer have an office. But um the, uh, we have business cards that say like your Houston, Texas referral partner, right? And so a lot of people will go to an event, right? And you'll hand out your normal business card or your do your little, you know, digital business card or QR code scan. And like, you know, people may or may not remember you, you know, whatever. We purposely have business cards for conferences, right? So there's some conferences coming up that some of my team members are going to over the next few months. And so they have, you know, their stacks of business cards that say, you know, your Houston, Texas referral partner it has a picture of our team on it you know, their personal cell phone number, their Instagram handle, all of that for them to stay connected. Um, <clears throat> we send out referral boxes, uh, like gift boxes to anyone that sends us a referral. Um, you know, we've sent out gifts to teams that we're looking to, you know, get in with. So it looks like I need to send one out to the, to the JT team out there in Denver, because clearly if they're sending their referrals to some Keller Williams team in I, Houston. I, I've never sent them a referral. Uh, <laughs> we I, never I just, even said the name. We, we won't say the name. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I might know who it may be. So that's why I'm like, I'm going to just go burn down their office and then uh, send Jordan a referral box. But I'm not bitter. It's fine. Um, no. But, What's going in that box? I want to know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to send two. One's going to, no, I'm just kidding. Anyways. Um, 
So yeah, I think that it's for us and, and Tim just put it in the chat. Hey, Tim. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tim just put yeah. it in the chat um, of yeah, like, I'm it's crazy. it's going and making those deeper relationships with people, right? And so, um, you know, I always tell my team, like now, especially as we've grown and I'm, uh, I'm taking them to events with me, right? And things like that, that like, they need to meet people, have those conversations, learn about them, and then go follow them on Instagram and exchange business cards, right? And have those conversations and, and create those relationships um, so that, you know, we are top of mind. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to, to be able to, you know, speak at events and do things like that, that then people know, you know, me, me and our brand. Um, I'm literally mm-hmm. always wearing a shirt that has our brand name on it. Um, if I'm not wearing a work hard, be kind shirt, it's normally a move me to Texas shirt. Um, and so, you know, I think it's being intentional, you know, meeting people at events and then just staying top of mind. So whether that's connecting on Instagram, whether that's, if you have you know, a podcast or, you know, a newsletter or something that keeps you top of mind. Um, and, and for us, like in joining a couple different coaching programs and stuff like that, like that was my intention was like, I am joining these to ensure that I'm making connections with people so that it, it ends up, you know, in us getting more business. So from those opportunities that come to you, Katie, from those efforts, obviously your team goes out and they do some of those things too, but you're pretty front and center on your team, right? And, and then you get referrals. What's your process of giving those out? Um, you know, from, cause those are different kind of efforts than just like my team is heavy on, okay, leads funnel in from referral partners goes into the system. We have automations firing out. You have a lot more coming to you. Right. Yeah, for sure. So, um, generally speaking, like if you're sending a referral to our team, like I would want to know if it's a buyer or a seller. Um, and then what, um, you know, what location their work they're, they're looking to purchase in. Um, sometimes people know, sometimes people don't know. Um, but again, as I said earlier, like for our, um, team, right. Like once you've sold a certain, once you've sold more than 10 homes, you can train to be a listing partner. You can also get the higher quality, um, the higher quality leads and things like that, the lower funnel leads. And so one of that is agent agent referrals. And so uh, a brand new agent on my team isn't going to get an agent agent referral, right? They're going to have to have put in the time and I need to be able to know that I could have my grandmother buy a house with them and I would be comfortable with that, right? And so there's a certain uh, level of agent. And so like we have a sub sub like group message, right? For agent agent referrals that like, if, um, you know, there's something in workplace or if there's, you know, something on a Facebook group or something like that, like they're the ones that we're talking to of like, Hey, who can call an agent right now? Hey, who's, you know, uh, whatever. And then I'll partner them right with, with Siri, with you or with your agent on a group text. Um, so I love that. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, whenever I go to an event, I literally, I I'm thinking about the cost of what it costs me to go fly hotel, and I, my goal is to make one relationship so that I can earn that back uh, in, yeah. in the form of referral. Um, not to mention the things that I might learn that might earn me business as well. But I, I it's, it is true, Katie, like all these different trips and things I, I go on and I've gone on for years have earned me a lot. I mean, I probably do 30, 40 transactions a year through referrals from other teams and other agents around the country. But uh, I love the intention that you're putting behind it. We don't have a program. We don't have, <laughs> we're not sending gifts so I feel like a jerk. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, another question in here um, that was asked. Martin, are you on? And you want to Toronto? Martin Toronto? This is a good one here. Or I can ask for you. Martin has left his desk. I know. This is always a <laughs> test, right? I do this to the agents. I'm all, if their cameras go off, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to ask you a question. His camera's still on. He just no longer in the room. <laughs> right. Maybe he's on a call. Um, do y'all well, have there's the crib in the background? So. <laughs> okay. This is, this is a uh, Houston speaking to, do y'all have all the deals put under the team leader's name or under the agent's name? I'm curious on that. Yeah. So buyer deals, all of them do go under, uh, my name. Um, and then, and, and honestly, like, for those of you that know me, it's totally not an ego thing. It's a, so that we can make sure we're managing all of the deals and that we know when things are going under contract. Like, cause what was happening was like agents would put a deal under a contract under their name. And this would have, this happened a couple of times. And like, we wouldn't find out about it until like the option period was over or like they, they cleared a contingency and we're like, well, what the hell? Like we need to be like on this and managing it. 
Um, so that was one of one of the things that we that we uh, did. Those agents that did, you know, weren't sending their deals to us. Also so they would no just the go. They wouldn't use the TC on the team, or they just like wouldn't send the shit over. And like then it would be like they would clear contingencies, and we would see something pop up, and we're like, "What is this?" It's like, oh, sh- like shoot, I forgot to send this over. We're like, okay. "What are we doing here?" You know. So um, that's one of the catch-alls now for us to make sure that we know what's happening. Um, as far as listings go, listings do go under the listing partner. So if Tim was on my team, the listing would go under Tim with me as the co-list agent because I want all of the calls going to Tim um, on those. So uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how how. So I I personally am not on any of our contracts anymore. Um, I don't want to be a liable, and I think it's different in Colorado, right, Jordan? Like you're liable even if you're on or not. I believe I heard that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, I, I I, wanna... well, it, it's a little less liable. If my name's not on it, but I mean, I, the state of Colorado sees me as a principal agent. So any agent that is on my team, I'm still somewhat responsible, but, but I, I don't have my name on the contracts because I was getting phone calls from title companies yes, and lenders asking me questions about the house. And I'm like, I don't even know the address. I've never even heard yeah. of this client's name. Well, and, and so... so for us, like I'm on the contract, like my name and license number, but then the phone number and email is the team member. And then underneath, cause like for us in Texas, the, the agent info page is like not part of the contract. So then underneath that, they write in there buyer's agent, Jordan Terrell, Jordan at Jordan.com and the phone number. So that like, it's on there twice to know, like, and teams, I feel like now are a bit uh, uh, more prevalent. So it's not like, it's a new, like, it's not like it's the first team a title company's ever seen, but that, that was an issue for us, Jordan, as well. The other thing that, that I'd like to see now is agents on my team are actually the ones that are starting to get awards and kind of get the limelight, not so much me, right? So their numbers are showing for them and not me. Uh, one of the things that I was worried about was that, okay, how do we get all the, if we don't have one neutral person, how do we not get like awards and different things like that? But I've actually found that working with the companies directly and giving them all of our team information, they're able to pull our stats that way. So um, I've been completely removed from any of the transactions. And, you know, again, this is just how we function on our team. And this has been evolving over time. But for me, I'm just I'm, I'm really nowhere to be found on it. I there's a there's a message in here by Cindy. Um, about managing agent to agent referral process. I'd love to hear that if you could share a little bit. Hi, everybody. Cindy Lisinski. I'm here in Los Angeles County. Uh, new or to real, just uh, not quite a month yet. Um, okay. And I'm just updating my systems of what I do uh, for realtor to realtor referrals, but I have a dedicated web page that I created. And I also have a, um, a Google, I use Google a lot. So I utilize Google forms and created a form that I send out to agents that I connect with and request that they fill that out. It takes less than three minutes of just getting their basic location, asking a little bit of what type of uh, agent they are, are they a solo agent, team lead um, on a team? So it takes less than three minutes. And then once I get so many of those uploaded through that form, then I can put them in on my Google map. And so I did start a new one. It's very uh, green at this moment where I have probably about eight real agents across the country um, that have connected with me through the workplace. So gradually, my goal is just to have that particular map just with real agents, because I did see that on the workplace of, you know, trying to take advantage of all the agents that we have rather than utilizing agents at other companies, but making sure that they, of course, work the area and can um, definitely serve the client that I would refer to them. I've always had it a goal of my transactions for my team and I that we need to work on referral uh, between agent to agent. So I love the the 
concept of the business card. I've made up special square business cards that share, show what areas I serve and then just a little bit about us so that when we do go to agent events in different areas, I give that out to try to grab that attention and get those referrals. So referrals have been from other agents have been about 10% of my business, which isn't as high as I would like it to be. So that's one of my big goals for 2023 is to really up that uh, process that I have and really make it work more effectively. Awesome. I love would it. You, hey, would you hey, be Katie, open to oh. sharing some of the links in the chat as well, uh, Cindy? Um, probably next time we meet, because I do want to have them all updated with the real logo and everything and have that all um Christine, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to put in the chat, my email. And if you wouldn't mind sending me some stuff, then we'll see you on the next one. And we'll bring that up. That's great. Sure. No Thank problem. you. I welcome the opportunity. Okay, so, so thank you. So, so we're at the top of the hour here before you go. Okay. You, you've got a lot of value. Um, learning just about your system, your structure, and the things you're killing it at. There's some people from the group that could speak into, is there a place in your business where you're stuck that you would love to hear maybe somebody that has already navigated that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I know that, um, you know, I think we're implementing some of the paid uh, lead stuff. So I'd love to hear any, you know, tips on scaling and training on lead conversion for for paid leads, you know, I know Siri does a lot of the flex and other things or Zillow and other things. I know you do as well, I think. Uh, so yeah. Is anybody on the call here doing uh, leads and lead conversion at a high level that might have some good tips for Katie? Don't be shy. <laughs> well, I, I will, well, I'll, I'll offer over, you know, we have some systems in our, uh, that we've built out for, you know, uh, we have ISA lead conversion training uh, modules that we've built out for training our ISAs and our agents. Um, I mean, the leads are, uh, uh, you know, so robust. Uh, there's so many different sources, but it comes down to follow up. I think for us, we built an internal ISA team that uh, all the leads go to the ISAs and then the ISAs filter through them to set uh, real appointments, um, except for Flex. Flex goes kind of directly to everybody. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, and I said this last week when Lana Rodriguez was on the call with us, um, but I think GLS, um, Google Local Services is probably like one of the best, easiest sources to win big. And it all comes down to having lots of Google reviews um, and then paying for Google to point people to you. That's one. Um, and then there's people out there that will manage that for you to make sure that you're top of mind and top of Google. Um, but pay-per-click is just a, it's a numbers game, you know, it's just making sure you have the right. I would say another thing that that's really, really helpful over the years for me is, is making sure you have the right lead manager, I mean, not someone internal on my team, but an external lead manager, someone who's managing your budget and your ads and making sure that it's optimized correctly. Um, so those are my first big thoughts, but I, I welcome anything that we're doing to you um, if we can ever share it. And it's yeah. through my director of lead generation. Hey, Lana, Hi. Lana's here. Um, yeah, so we we obviously do run high lead volume coming through. Um, and again, I'm a visual, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple of things here. We actually just redid our team calendar because the goal is to have my agents really hyper-focused on uh, more things with, with less. So less is more is our theme, but um, we have scripting and role playing on Mondays. We have objection handling, which is going to be happening here pretty soon. You can see the little yellow stars. Those are you, you must, if you're getting leads, you need to be on these two meetings. Um, if you're in Zillow, there's little things that you have to do. There's the Z there and, and stuff like that. And then of course we have the real, um, we have some of the real things going on that we have in our, in our schedule, but we don't make those things required, but they're highly encouraged for stuff. So we do really emphasize heavily on the scripting, role playing, objection handling, if you're getting leads. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is we do have a system in Slack 
where, and we do have an ISA team, but not all of the leads go to the ISAs. The ISAs, especially now, are living more in the nurtures. And I do believe in the agents being able to convert. Um, Zillow is a whole other program, which by the way, for those of you on Zillow Flex, I will I would love to do a training. Does anybody want us to do a training on Zillow Flex? Is anybody on Zillow Flex in this meeting? If not, uh, yes, Jordan. <laughs> That'll probably be a good one for us to do. Um, but what we do is um, we have these, in, this is in Slack, we have these always be closing channels. And these are our ISAs. So they set appointments and we have automations in our CRM. And we have these always be closing channels segmented by lead types. So always be closing 90 are our agents that are just getting started. So obviously we don't want them to have the cream of the crop leads, right? We want to have them get the beginner type of leads. Um, and then we have it segmented in, <clears throat> into our Rocket Homes, our Veterans United, our Zillow. And then we manage who's in those Slack channels to get those leads. And so um, these are first to claims. So they click on this link and then they have to drop down their name and then they, they claim it. So as you get going, um, you know, again, all this stuff is kind of built over time, but as you get going and you have different lead platforms, you're going to want to segment those leads by a system or else it's gonna be overwhelming. It's gonna be hard to scale if you don't have those things in place. So again, I'm happy to share anything we have or be you know, a, a point of contact for you as you are scaling. The other thing, if you do buy realtor.com leads, if anybody on here does, make sure that you guys audit those with them. We, for example, received half of what we paid for last year and you have to ask for a lead review or you will not get your money back. So I have a spreadsheet that my TC runs every month. It gets sent over to me. I have meetings every month and we review realtor.com and we see where our numbers are at. And then you have to ask for a lead review every year or they'll just take your money. So I should be getting thousands of dollars back because I got half the leads. But I can tell you in years past, I didn't track that stuff. They won. I didn't, you know, that kind of a thing. So that's what your, your, you guys are brains um, with your systems. Katie, I know that, I mean, if knowing how you're wired, I think you're such a systems person that I think if you just get a lead source and, and implement it, um, you're going to build systems around it and it's going to work. It really yeah. comes down to the, the, the system. It, that's how leads work is yeah. having a, a process in place to distribute them and to follow up with them. And, um, but guys, uh, we are at the the top of the hour here. Um, I wanted to appreciate Katie for giving her time. Um, Katie from Houston. Um, so if you guys have referrals, I'll only send them to, to He's Katie. He's the only one you go to, just Katie in Houston, that's it. <laughs> Siri in San Diego, Jordan in Denver. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, yeah, Liv, appreciate everybody. You... Um, Liv, oh. can you bring up the last page of the slide real fast too? If you're still with us. I'm still here. You're still here. I'm um, yeah, so thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we are here every Wednesday. So come and join us, check us on social media and you'll see who's coming on because each week we have another guest. Um, likewise, if you have a team and you wanna be a guest and share what your superpower is or come on and have us help you with something in your business, then um, please let us know. And I also put in the chat, there's a Google link. There's a Google link to the drive. And as we're building this stuff, we will have a, an open drive for you guys to get all the tangibles. So Katie will work with you on figuring out what PDF or what behind the scenes thing. We always wanna leave with some sort of a nugget at the end. Um, and so we'll have that in there. But um, anyways, other than that, you guys find us on social media. And it was really great to have you all join us today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Katie. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone.